Right, so I've been thinking about making this video for ages, but I kind of held off. Now, first of all, don't really like have any massive feelings about this <clears throat> in terms of like Night Chaka or obviously good mates with Lantern. It's good what he's doing and stuff. And like, I do like their What's Piquillo articles, but I think I do need a little bit of context here because I think some people get a little bit too excited about the details. And this last article really, really cracked me quite a lot because there were just some things that I was just like, I just don't really understand it. So it was Jebel Hafi, um, and it was like, this is the climb, so yeah, fair enough. If you watched it, it was like a massive, massive uh, bunch at the bottom, cracking it out. And um, yeah, basically you can see like, it was just uh, Remco and Yates left. So you can see it's like nice analysis, um, but then, and then we go into the results, and then we go into some timings, and then we go into some, some pseudoscience. So the reason why I think this is, well, maybe pseudoscience is too harsh, but the reason why I don't think this is accurate is like, I just don't get how you reckon you can calculate what's per kilo to two decimal places. It means your uncertainty is plus or minus 0.01. Oh, it's just like, that is impossible. Because you're assuming so many things to do these calculations. And I'm not saying they're completely inaccurate, because I'm going to show at the end of the video, they're not like wildly off. But mate, two decimal places. I reckon one's bold. Two, I mean, come on, like... CRR, rolling resistance. You can do the CRR calculations from uh, bicycle rolling resistance, but that is on a smooth drum. There will be a decent amount of error in that. You've got air pressure. Okay, you can account for that decent amount. Wind. You can look at my windsock, which we've seen up here. Um, and, you know, that gives you a good good idea. But you don't know the microseconds. You don't know, the, you know exactly this. And I think the biggest reason why it's just impossible to have calculate to two decimal places is if you've ever ridden a bike on a climb, how you ride in the bunch can radically change how many watts per kilo you do. If you start at the bottom and have to make up like 30 positions, that will skew it by like probably one decimal place. Then you think like how you sit in the wheel, are you really close to them? Are you doing massive surges? This changes everything. And also just like how much draft you get. You're assuming um, aerodynamic position like the CDA. Like how can you do this to two decimal places? I, I just... I just think there's, there's no need to do it to two decimal places because it just doesn't make sense. And then when they start to come out with like, oh, so Yates is doing 0 0.06 more than Remco. I mean, it's just like me, like, how can you be certain? And I just don't see the point in doing it because it's not like, oh, yeah, you know, if you just said, yeah, they're doing about 6.7 and you're like, OK, yeah, it's probably about right. Could be 6.8, could be 6.6, .6, probably that. But then you're thinking, no, 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 they definitely know it's 6.7. And then we're talking about like the, the end part. I just don't see it adds that much. And then there's the climbing performances, which for some reason on my computer don't seem to come up too much. Um, which again is like, they're all estimated was per kilo. So again, it's kind of like, do you have to take these things with a pinch of shot, soul? Because uh, power data is not accurate. Calculations are obviously not going to be accurate. It's kind of all just like roughly. Like you can see how fast they're going, obviously. Um, but like these comparisons here is kind of like, I am not a, a massive fan of. So I just think there's just no point doing minute calculations to two decimal places because i just don't think you can be that accurate <coughs> when you're doing it and also the other thing is the vam number it's really hard to calculate you think oh no it'll be quite easy but actually to get the exact geographical topological data to make sure that the heights is perfect as well as like the start times and finishes making sure that's 100 percent perfect the vam is not as easy as you think to calculate and then including the gradient um but anyway look, the question is so like on this on this thing i'm saying just you know random person on the internet saying, oh, they can't calculate two decimal places. Um, and, you know, I give my reasons why, and I think then probably not, not too bad. But, like, this number here, I just, I just, this is the what cracks me the most. I just do not think, correct me if I'm wrong, Nychaka, how have you calculated this? Because I, you're just saying he sat on more. But is this just feeling? Or did you time it? And then did you do, like, a proper calculation of, like, oh, the CDA drafting? Again, like, so much error because how do you know how much draft they get from a CDA that you guessed on both two riders? And then there's motorbikes involved, which, again, have you accounted for the draft of the motorbike? Because, like, that is just cooked as well. So there's just so many things. But anyway, I think, you know, maybe write an academic paper on it and we could see all the all the proof. But at the moment, I'm kind of not convinced. So anyway, the unfortunately for Jebel Hafeet, um, no one uploaded power data who was quick, which is a shame because normally Sapkos does, but obviously it just got, and his power meter is good now because it's a, it's a SRAM quark. Um, but Ben Zwiehoff and Emmanuel Bookman did, right? Issue is they're on Shimano, right? And Shane Miller and all the rest of them, DC Rainmaker, reckon it goes over 20 watts when you're in the small ring. 
I don't think they're probably in a small ring for all of the climb, but you can see Bala back in the day in 2018 cracked out 390. Now this actually was just like in training, right? He just went up and whacked it. But this kind of gives you a decent approximation of how far. So he did 6.2 here, right? Um, and he did like 23, 28. And obviously Remco in a race did quicker. So that kind of tells you like maybe not 100% sure that he did, did do 6.7. Like that seems quite a lot. And you might say, okay, yeah, but maybe Bala was lighter. Maybe his power meter reads different. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But then, you know. Uh, so anyway, then we have Zvihov, who's done 6.1. But then do we have to take into calculation the consideration the Shimano power meter inaccuracies? Maybe. Um, but the bottom bit, he was doing 6.8, right? So this was like on the wheel, 8%, 22K an hour, 6.8. It kind of sounds about right, maybe. But then, <laughs> again, it's, it's like so, so uncertain because it's a Shimano power meter, so can we trust it? But, you know... Their calculations of 6.7 is probably not wild off. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do my own. It, it's, it's, it, to be honest, it's too hard to tell from the power data. Normally, I can, you know, I have a, a guess based on the power data. But the fact that Zvihoff was like a minute and a half down, he was doing a lot of work for Bookman. It's, it's very hard to tell. Um, and like you can see here, it's like, you know, it's, it's like this Zoccarato. Okay, we can do 421. I think he was on decent power. Meter. I think he's on, on SRAM. But he was two minutes down. So, you know, it gets to the point where you're like, oh, I, I just can't tell. So we now gone through all of that. We reckon it might be right based on this. You know, if they continue the same speed the whole way up, then maybe maybe they did. Um, you can see, obviously, they slow down quite a lot towards the top. But it, it's very hard to tell. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it could be right. It could be wrong. Um, and I, I just think you just got to take all these numbers with a massive pinch of salt. If they're power meter numbers or if they're calculated numbers. And I think people calculate into two decimal places. It just kind of like, it, it just, it's just not possible. It's, I, I would be happy to be proven wrong. And if someone could tell me, no, I can guarantee you that the error is with, like, you know, up to two decimal places, but I, nah, <laughs> no way, <laughs> no way. CDA can't, how much drafting they did from the motorbike even, how they sat in the group, rolling resistance. Yeah, it's just like, nah, no chance. Wind. How can you tell? You know, wind might change here, wind might change there. Like, it's just, yeah, it's tough there out. Uh, oh, yeah, what about um, efficiency of the bike? Some wax chains, some not on wax chains. Uh, ceramic speed, bottom brackets. Though that's, that's, there's a lot of stuff here um, to crack in the calculator. So, impressive that they reckon they could do it to two decimal places. Um, but again, like, I mean, I really like what Lantern's done, and I think the Watts Piquito calculations are always interesting. They're good talking points, but I think. Uh, as my final point is just just got to take them with a massive pinch of salt um even the stuff when i do like oh this is from the power meter again you've got to take it with a pinch of salt because power meters just aren't that accurate how they calibrated all the rest of it and i think got to kind of move away from necessarily this stuff because i think it's just really hard to actually prove who's going well and like you know like you can show who's going well sorry but you can't necessarily know exactly what's what's peculiar done it's all kind of a guessing game but anyway cheers for watching let me know what you think below